My red box is finally done for this conquest. How is yours getting along? That's right, it is Sector 2 feats that we're looking at today, and your boy Scribble has got that finest grade cheese to share with you all. Let's break this one down. The Sector 2 feats are as follows. We need to attempt to inflict plague 400 times. The only people that can do that are, of course, the Night Sisters. We need to win 14 battles with no attackers in our squad, which is surprisingly easy. We need to evade at least 100 attacks in battles that we have won, which again is actually straightforward and we need to gain health steal up 60 times. Now these are all rather straightforward and juicy for us ladies and gentlemen, but before we start getting going in this, let's talk a little bit about the data disk setup that we are looking to use. For the data disks then, we are rocking a heal over time, just the Uno here, it helps us sort of keep that survivability going just a little bit and it's just a one dot data disk. Zealous Ambition is the true hero of this particular conquest. It is able to provide you with a boatload of additional offers offense on your healers and supports. If you are using a healer and support and they've got say 100,000 health, you're adding in this blue case 54,400 offense to that character. It's rather a lot. Do recommend you pick up Zealous Ambition. Leader's Resolve is not necessary but it is nice, pairs very well with uh, zealous Ambition. It gives us a bunch of additional stats for our leaders. Works very, very well in all instances. Quickening is my personal favorite data disc of this set. It is just a one dot that adds additional speed and evasion to our characters, which is huge, and it will play in to the global or the sector feed here to evade attacks in which we win. So I'm rocking three of them right now, but honestly, if you've got like four or five quickening data discs, I'd, I'd quite happily get rid of Leader's Resolve and th replace that with three additional quickenings just to give us boatloads of speed. It really helps us get out the door quickly. And then finally, I'm using an additional Entrenched here just for a little bit of extra survivability. What I would recommend is that if you do have a voluntary Vanguard data disc, make sure you pick that one up because it becomes very useful in one of the feats that we're going to talk about in just a moment. So. Let's think about these feats then. What do we want to get done? Let's look at health steal up and evasion. That will be our first port of call. Now you can do this battle on just about any node, but I like to try and find something that's got a little bit of longevity, a little bit of survivability. It's not great if you've got a bunch of zealous ambition for this because you don't really want your Visus Mar doing too much damage. So the team consists of a Palpatine lead, we're throwing in Thrawn, Mara Jade, we are throwing in GMY, and we're throwing in Visus Mar. The idea here is to control the enemy team, and then you're just going to go ahead and use Palp's second special and his basic and GMY's ability to spread buffs. So Palp's second special here gives us health steal up. There we go, we've got five instances there. If we just basic and basic, and we're back round. Ten instances. Let's basic, and then we can pass the turn over to someone like Visa's Mar or GMY. We'll do an AoE here. That's 15 instances in total of health steal up. That's 20 instances of health steal up. Isn't this wonderful? I love it. There's no point in really using Fracture here. We're just going to be generating turn meter right now. One more turn with Palps. Oh, there we go. 25 instances of health steal up. 30 instances of health steal up. Now, we do have evasion here so that we, we can slowly, that's 35. Um, we can slowly get the evasions. There we go. That's two evasions done there. I think we're on 35 health steal up at the moment. Now, if you go up against something like a Phoenix node or even the Mon Mothma node, you should be able to generate quite a lot of dodges here. 35 becomes, what, 40 health steal ups. We're looking rather strong at the moment. And uh, unfortunately, Hermit Yoda, Grandmaster Yoda over there doesn't have his AoE spread. I think we're on 35 instances of health steal up. That's 40. Lovely. Let's keep on going then. Come on now. So yeah, do this against a team that's incredibly tanky, something like a Mon Mothma or a Phoenix team, and you will absolutely fly by. I accidentally passed a GMY here and then I do the hop, it was a silly setup. I should have just drawn it out just a little bit longer. But that gets you basically all of the health steal up and maybe additionally some of the evasions that you need throughout the course of the battle. Really, really quick and easy to get this one done, guys. If you're looking to build up all of the health steal ups very, very quickly, you can use something like a Ray team. This is all about spreading mastery and letting the opponent gather enough turn meter so that we can actually evade a bunch of attacks. You'll be able to get all 100 evasions up in one go. Failing that, just keep on using teams like the Mara Jade Palp teams to spread 
uh, foresight with your GMY and that will easily, easily let you build up as you progress through. This is just a one-stop shop for people that want to get it done. We'll show you how it works right now. So essentially, Ray, when the enemy gains turn meter and a character is inspired, they are going to be ramping up mastery. All of these characters here, apart from Hermit Yoda, are evasion mastery characters. So the more time that they evade, uh, sorry, the more mastery that they gain, the more they're going to evade. You see, we've already got a couple of dodges there. You don't really want to be running, again, Zealous Ambition in this setup. I do at the moment, extra dodge there, just because uh, I haven't removed them off. It's essentially going to increase the damage that your support character is doing. We're already getting some dodges here. Isn't it wonderful? You want to be facing off against a team that has got a lot of turn meter generation. So Mon Mothma is absolutely perfect for this. And we can just stay focused on Scarif Rebel Pathfinder. If Chirrut over there does happen to taunt, we can kill him and he will get revived. As long as you don't kill him with Whirlwind or something like that, it would be absolutely fine. So the more turns that they spend attacking characters like Ray, for example, the better off we're going to be. Uh, JTR, but I mean by that Ray, not, not OG GL Ray. Uh, so we just need to get through to um, more mastery spreading. You can see over there that Cal has got it. Look at all those dodges already. Let's force the taunt over onto JTR right now. And yeah, sure, let's go ahead and place Master's Training on her. And we'll pass this over. Does she currently have... She's not currently got any inspiration, unfortunately, so she's not going to be dodging as much as she should. But we're still dodging really, really well here at the moment. Every time... There we go. She's got that now. She has got her inspiration now so we should be able to generate lots and lots of mastery let's just keep going here i mean we could probably most likely put this on basic like cal over there hitting for 200k plus dodge 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 this is the, just the easiest way in the world of getting this done eventually it gets to a point where they just can't hit you they just can't hit you at all look at all those dodges <laughs> those dodges are just crazy man every single time they generate in that term meter dodge 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 i think they might have got to the point now where they just can't hit us dodge 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 Dodge, dodge, dodge. <laughs> dodge, dodge, dodge. <laughs> I just love Ray teams, man. So, yeah. Now, don't forget, guys. Don't forget, you do need to actually win the battle in order for this to count, okay? And uh, fortunately for us, it's going to be very easy to win this battle because Ray over here has been ramping offense as her mastery. And look at all the turn meter that they're generating right now. Isn't that wonderful? That, that's going to mean that when we choose to hurt people with Ray, she is going to hurt people pretty heavily. Don't forget, we currently got Leader's Resolve right now. So we are able to go ahead and uh, increase Ray's stats quite heavily as well. So I'm not going to keep this running so you can, you know, see how it really works and everything like that. You get the idea. Basically, these, these guys can't be hit. They're assisting lots. And then all you want to do is just, um, you know, whip out a whirlwind or go into your ultimate and you should be able to just absolutely decimate the enemy team. It's rather wonderful. Let's go over here and, I don't know, do this or something. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how much damage this ray does now when her ult drops. Let's go in one time speed here and... Da 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 boop. Lovely. Wonderful, wonderful, wunderbar. That's uh, I probably should call him Cal there really more than anyone else, because he's the one that's gonna deal all the damage. Bop. Yeah, okay, he's getting up. Yeah, you still can't hit me, mate. And they've actually got AWEs as well. Wonderful. I love it. I love it. There we go. And it's as easy as that. You can just do that on the bonus node at the end. You'll be able to get all 100 evades in one battle. Not a problem at all. We're going to take a look at the plague feat next. Now, I could get about 120-ish plagues with my Night Sisters, and my Night Sisters are absolutely terrible. As you can see over here, we've got some gear 8s and gear 12s and gear 10s. So I'm using Mother Towns in lead. We're taking in Merin. We're taking in Daka and Zombie. And then I'm throwing in Malak over here. Now, the data disk setup that you want for this is going to be anything that has survivability. You know, we're talking entrenched. We're talking quickenings. Don't take in Zealous Ambition because we do have a number of support here. We don't want to kill the enemy. We just want them to slowly get hurt and healed up. So we're going to use that Mon Mothma node again on the bonus one um, because they've got a lot of survivability. So it'll be good to generate a lot of plague. Using Malak, we want to have Voluntary Vanguard on him. So he's always going to be taunting. It keeps the rest of our team nice and healthy. Let's roll it. So it's very simple and straightforward. We've got Voluntary Vanguard there, forcing the taunt onto our Malak. We've got a bit of Entrenched going. And essentially under a Mother Talzing lead, whenever we try to use special attacks, there's a chance that we can apply Plague, which is wonderful. And essentially all you do is you pretty much just go in and hit auto and have a good time, I guess. I mean, I'm just going to grab a sip of coffee over here. 
In my instance, because my Knight Sisters are pretty weak and I'm not using anything to boost their offense, such as Zealous Ambition or any sort of stacking offense data discs, it means we're never in any danger of killing them. The enemy Chirrut over there is going to be passing lots of heal up or heal over time, sorry, to the team, so they're always going to be recovering, which lets us supply more plague and all that sort of business. We're never going to kill them. If you want to kill someone, you just focus on Scarif Rebel Pathfinder as he will revive if he's got buffs or the extra summoned unit. And you can basically just put this on auto, sit back, relax, have a cup of tea and just go about your business. I did this when I had zero stacks of plague at the start and I ended up with 124. So you could get done in three or four battles, probably. Probably more if you've got better better modded Night Sisters than I have, maybe a couple more Zetas, a bit more gear, that sort of thing. You can honestly probably do this with just standard Night Sisters as you go through the zone. Easy money, ladies and gentlemen. It'll also feed into, I believe, the no attackers feat. If you don't use someone like Asajj, you need to make sure that you're not using someone like her. Just throw in an additional support character or potentially just um, um, go in with Malak like this and you won't trigger any of your attacker feats either. Wonderful business. So there you go. You can see we get to the last 20 seconds. Everybody is still really healthy. Everybody's still alive. Like I said, this got me about 124 plagues. Not a problem at all. So the last sector feat that we need to be thinking about is no attackers. And there's a, this bunch of teams that you can use no attackers for. Um, in particular, if you're pairing it up with a bunch of Zealous Ambition, you can get lots and lots of real good work done with lots of these teams. So what I like to try and do is try to combine it with global feats for stuff like we need to win 40 battles with Galactic Republic. So something like this Padme team over here, which is using, you know, R2D2, C3PO, GMY and GK over here. This is full Galactic Republic and we've got support and support. So Zealous Ambition and support on Padme. Zealous Ambition means we're going to absolutely decimate over there. You've got Palpatine's health steal team here that has got no attackers in it as well. That can work very well. You've got no attackers on your imp troopers over here. Also, all of them are support units, so they'll do boatloads of damage. Um, we won't look at the mini boss nodes right now. You can use Trench. Trench does not belong on the bench, guys. Exercise your right to use Trench. Lots of support in this team as well, and you get a tank through GBA. Just lets you power through those feats. We've got the no attacker plagues that we just did. We've got no attackers with GL layer. Lots and lots of teams can make this work, guys. You just got to try and flex it to the utmost on your roster. Um, and then you can even use the health steal up an evasion team there from Ray. All of these characters are evasion mastery characters and you'll be able to get some health steal up just by going into that uh, that boss node at the end. All right. OK, so I'm not going to show the battles for that, but we are going to take a look at the mini boss and the main boss of Sector 2 just to make sure that we can clean up those feats without too many issues. The mini boss is Imperial Troopers with Veers and we need to do it with five surviving and with only dark side characters. Now, I don't need to do the dark side characters and honestly, you won't need my help with that. Any sort of really good dark side team is going to be doing it. You know, taking your teams like your Darth Revan, taking your Afras, taking your Jabbers, taking your, you know, whatever dark side units that you've got. Go in with C Bane, you know, have some fun. I think you do actually have to have a full team, though. So bear that in mind. We're going to do the five surviving one here. And this one is rather fun and it will be no attackers as well. So we're going in with Dash Rendar fives and then just random support characters, guys. With Zealous Ambition and Leader's Resolve, and maybe if you're running Vitality or something like that, you don't need it, and uh, Quickening Data Discs to give us a lot of bunch of additional speed, your dash is going to go first, and when your dash goes first, he is going to open up a veritable can of whoopass on the enemy team. Just do a nice big AoE and people just melt. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Then we've got Master's Training. I like to try and get rid of Piet first. Now, they are going to revive, and you cannot prevent this revive. They do it five times, but honestly, with all the assists that I've got here, it's not like the enemy gets the chance to survive. They just they, they lose basically everybody before they take a turn. And then, you know, we're, we're just going to see them off at the end. It's really funny. They have fives doing no damage after everybody else is basically just one tapping. <laughs> Chopper, they're throwing rocks. 195,000 from dash there on a basic. And that lets you have five surviving. You could go in with a 501st team, guys. But honestly, I find that more fun. The boss node then, we're going up against a Qui-Gon Jinn team. We need to win with Cad Bane and Aura Singh surviving, and we need to win without using any Jedi, Sith, or unaligned Force users. So we can get this feat done in one battle, but if you are struggling with this particular team, then I'd recommend you just go in with Jabba, 
Okay, Jabba can get this done in one battle, just take in Cad Bane and Aura Singh, and then take in your the rest of your Hut Cartel that you happen to have, and it'll get it done no problem. But I'm not going to show you, I'll just use Jabba, because I know a lot of you won't have Jabba. So instead, we'll do a standard Bounty Hunter team here for this. So we're using Aura Singh lead with Grief and Mando, and then Cad Bane, and um, somebody else. Somebody else, I've forgotten. Bosk. Bosk, there we go. So Aura Singh is in the leadership. We need to use 10 stealth ab uh, abilities while stealthed, basically. So we start off with the first special, then we'll use the second special, and we're just trying to hit contract here. I'm going to use the mass assist over here on Qui-Gon. It is going to tick off Anakin. We're going to get the taunt up, and then we're going to call in to assist. We can ignore, so I want to try and target down Anakin where I can. I should probably be calling in Cad Bane because he is actually a support character and will deal significant amounts of damage. Boop -ba -boop -ba -boo, just waiting for our opportunity here. There we go. Anakin gets ticked off. Lovely jubbly. And we've hit our contract as well. So all we need to do now is get some crit chance up on Mando and we'll be able to disintegrate a unit. It shouldn't be too hard to get this done. Um, Mando can obviously ignore Taunt whilst he has that Bounty Hunter's Resolve, which is wonderful. Uh, so we're just waiting for his turn. Here we are. Let's go ahead and just the yeet. There goes Anakin. And we just need to get rid of everybody else now. Qui-Gon Jinn has gone the way of the dodo, and it's clean up from here, more or less, guys. You could probably put it on auto this point. You don't really have to worry about Cad Bane and Aura Singh. Bosk should be taunting for the most part. I'm doing silly stuff here. If you get the opportunity, and if you're using Zealous Ambition, calling Cad Bane all the time, he'll do stupid amounts of damage. Absolutely ridiculous damage. There we go. Goodbye, General Kenobi. I say goodbye, General Kenobi. Thank you. And we'll get round to another disintegrate here now, and we'll make Padme die of sadness. Dusty, dusty sadness. And it's just GMY left. Honestly, not too difficult of a boss node. We get both feats done in one battle. Like I said, if you've got Jabba the Hutt, just go Jabba the Hutt with Aura Singh, Cad Bane, and then fill it up with Hutt Cartel, and you'll have zero issues. And that's going to do it for Sector 2, ladies and gentlemen. Before you go, please do make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and leave me a little comment down below saying how well you got your feats done. I want to give a good, massive shout out to my wonderful, wonderful patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the tribe. I really appreciate all of your continued support. I will see you all in the very next video, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out, and may the Force be with you.